When I was a kid, we used to have our meals set out on the porch in the summertime. I still enjoy dinner under the stars. Look, a star is born. Talk is cheap, and I am starving. So we are going to fix our first dish. It's a Cantonese roast chicken. It's very easy to do. Everybody can do it. The most important ingredient in this particular dish is the chicken. <laughs> We're going to first marinate the chicken. You can use this chicken right here. This is a chicken fry. You can use roast. You can use a roast chicken. There's about three to three and a quarter of a pound. We're going to marinate it with the following ingredient. We have some five spice powder, some salt, and a tiny bit of garlic and ginger, and some soy sauce. Okay? This all-purpose soy sauce. You go well with all the stir-fried dishes as well as roasting and barbecue dishes. All we have to do is mix all of these together. Mix all the dry ingredients together. Put it right here. And have some garlic right here. One piece. Put it right here. Ginger right here. Just press it right, right here. And then when it's done, you rub this inside out. Okay, rub the dry ingredient inside out. <laughs> rub it outside. Okay. Make sure you got a nice flavor. Okay. Not only outside and inside the cavity, but also inside the chicken, underneath the skin. Okay. Very important. Marinate under the skin. Beauty may only be skin deep, <laughs> but taste bud goes deeper than that. The reason why I do that is because this way, the flavor goes underneath the skin, right next to the muscle, OK? OK? Aside from that, I also put a piece of ginger on each side, so the flavor. Some garlic on each side, OK? Garlic on each side. And then to give that nice golden brown color when it's roasted, I am going to put in a tiny bit of all-purpose soy sauce to give that nice, beautiful golden brown color, OK? Make sure you rub it nice and even. <laughs> nice and even. You can do it for half an hour to two hours. Nice and beautiful. And once it's done, you put this, wipe your hand, OK? Make sure to get this wonderful roaster. I don't know how many of you have ever seen this. This is a vertical roaster. Looks like the Eiffel Tower in Paris. You see why you do it? Because you're going to put the chicken right on top of this vertical roaster. When I first saw this, somebody told me, we're going to give you a vertical roaster. I thought we are talking about a stand-up comedian. <laughs> now, look at this. Everybody look. Look at this. This way, the flavor would make. <laughs> Put it one, two, uh, three. <laughs> Let's just sit there and sit tight. Don't move. You know why this is so good? Because you're cooking the chicken inside out. This heats up. Not only the heat will come out from inside, go all the way like a chimney, but also this little spikes here heats up the chicken inside. So you're cooking the chicken a lot faster. When you cook ch chicken like this, they are juicy, succulent, tender. And not only that, it saves a lot of time. So that's the reason why I use this vertical roaster. And it's marvelous. You turn this up here, turn this up here. If you want, you can even put a little piece of green onion right in here to get the flavor. You see, this is how you do it. And you bake it in your oven for approximately 375 to 400 degrees for about 40 minutes or so. And then you take it out and you glaze it with the hoisin honey glaze. Now, I want to show you this I have done ahead of time. So I'm going to go to the oven and pick up the one that I've been cooking for approximately 35 to 40 minutes because I want to glaze it. So I'm going to take this out from here. We'll glaze this. And the great thing about this cooking the chicken in a vertical roaster is the fat 
drip all the way down so you don't have to have fat. So the skin is so crispy and so juicy. And this is a mixture of hoisin and honey with a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. We'll glaze this on all sides. Now make sure when you touch things that are hot, never, never touch things like that. Always move it so you would not get burned. Look at this. Make sure you brace it. And then put it back and brace it for about five to 10 minutes. Okay, this way you have an absolutely golden brown color. Brace the whole thing, brace the whole thing. And then we will remove these and set this aside and put it back in the uh, oven. Okay, look at this. Wow, it's hot. We'll put this back in the oven and let it freeze for a little while and then they're absolutely delicious. In the meantime, I have some time left. So I'm gonna show you how to make a Chinese potato salad. Everybody knows German potato salad. And this is this Chinese cousin. What makes these potato salad Chinese? You cut the potato into little dice like this. Okay, one inch dice. Mix them all up. You do not even have to peel it, okay? And then we're gonna cut up some of the other vegetable right here, some bok choy. Cut it up, put it all together. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, Chinese normally do not eat raw bok choy, but in this country, you can use raw bok choy, cut it up. They're very, very crunchy, very nice, and it's very good. And some green onion, put them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put it all together, put it right here, and also give some color contrast. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Put them all together and go one, two, three, four. See how fast you can do it? You transfer food from here to here, all together. This knife act like a spatula, okay? If you have a lot of time, you should transfer food like this. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Or otherwise, hold on to this. Done. More green onion. And then if you want, you can chop up some, a tiny, tiny bit of cilantro if you want. This would give some flavor, but also you can use it as a garnish, but this would give a nice flavor. And then some, this is bacon, already roast, already kind of baked. It. Cut it up, cut it up, cut it up to give some texture and flavor. This is roasted bacon. Pan fry, mix them all up. And then you're gonna make a very interesting sauce. This particular sauce dressing is very easy. Look at all this. Now, you probably will be surprised. A lot of people don't know. The new generation of Chinese chef, they're using a lot of ingredients that are very, very popular in this country. Mayonnaise is never used in Chinese cuisine, long time ago. But now in a lot of Hong Kong style restaurant, a lot of new Chinese restaurant, the young talented chef use mayonnaise. I'm gonna use, mix this up with sesame seed oil. I have about a quarter of a cup to have a cup of mayonnaise. One teaspoon of sesame seed oil and a tiny, tiny bit of dry sherry and a tiny bit of soy sauce, all purpose soy sauce. Sugar, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt. And I have to mustard, some hot mustard. What makes this Chinese potato salad? You use soy sauce, you use sesame seed oil, and you use the hot mustard. This done thing is so hot, it's gonna make your eyes starry. <laughs> Move this around, and then mix this, put it right in here, look at this. And then you can toss this whole thing. Mix up, mix up. This is a beautiful potato salad with a Asian touch, okay? Look at this, when this is nice and done, we are going to rinse my hand right here, wash it, and then we'll put this over here. We can garnish this, and it's gonna be beautiful. Look at this. When this is done, we'll put this right over here. This is a salad everybody can do, okay? You can use Chinese bok choy, or you can use, look at it, one, two, three. Look at how beautiful a Chinese potato salad. Now, I have to go to the oven and get my chicken so this way I can 
put the whole chicken together. I want to show you how wonderful the chicken is. The chicken has been braised, has been, wow, look at this beautiful. Wow. I'm going to show you, okay? Look at this. This is absolutely marvelous. Hot. Hot. Look at this. I'll take this whole thing out like this. Okay. Make sure you don't burn yourself. Now, everybody look. <laughs> First, you cut up this. Remove this. The whole thing comes out like this. The whole chicken breast and the whole chicken thigh come out like this. Okay? You have one whole piece. And then you hold on to this right in the middle. You see this? Right in the middle, right here. Hold on to this, cut this, and you can remove the whole thing. Just like this, push it down. Look at this. You can push the whole piece out like this. Look at how juicy and how succulent, okay? You do the same thing on the other side. Remove these first. Wow, this is so succulent, so juicy. Once again, hold on to this, cut this up, put this all together, look at this, hold on to this. Normally you should use a smaller knife to do it, and this is my smaller knife. When this is done, you put this back, wah, hot, and then you line them all up, put it one over here, one over here, one over here, everybody have a big gigantic piece. And then you hold on to this, cut this up, put it over here, hold on to this. If you have time, you can put the whole thing back like a chicken. But this way, it is just as good. Look at this. Put one whole piece, one, two, three, four, one whole piece. And this is how beautiful this piece is. Put it all together, you have an absolutely beautiful Cantonese roast chicken and this potato salad right in front of you. <laughs> this next dish leaves me starstruck. I'm gonna make plum flavor ribs. This particular dish is very easy to make. Everybody know ribs are ideal for outdoor cooking and outdoor eating. And I normally do it in my little hibachi under the stars. And this is my indoor hibachi. We're gonna grill it right over here. Now here, I have one pound to two pounds of pork spare rib. You can do lamb, you can do pork spare rib, you can do short rib, you can do any rib you want. You can do this rib. <laughs> now, make sure you gotta marinate this. We're gonna make this plum flavor sauce to marinate this. Here, Look at all these. I have one cup of plums. We're gonna put it right in here. One cup of plum. And uh, some plum juice. Tiny bit of garlic. One little clove of garlic, okay? Mix them all up. And also I have some rice vinegar. Dry sherry. And also honey. One tablespoon of honey. Come on, honey. Come, come. <laughs> this, this alone takes forever. Okay, you have honey, you have plum. This is one sweetheart of a dish. <laughs> put them all together, very nice. I love this dish. And also put a tiny bit of salt, put a tiny bit of, oh, chili pepper. This is gonna be hot honey, plum. Tiny bit of, look at this. This is one little button that my cleaver doesn't have. Puree! <laughs> if I have to use my knife to do it, I would have been splashed all over the place. This is done. When this is done, you take it out. This is beautiful, nice. And we're gonna marinate this. This particular sauce, plum, honey. Wow, look at this. This is also, this particular sauce goes, also go really well with lamb. I love it, I have tried it before. This is very good. You should marinate it for at least two to four hours, okay? Let it 
put it all together, we're going to set it aside because we're going to let it sit there. In the meantime, we have a wonderful dish right here, which already marinated for a little while. We're going to put it in into this indo hibachi. Wow, this is hot. Can you see the smoke? Make sure to let it cook. In the meantime, I want to show you another dish, which is very, very easy to do. This particular dish, I call it grilled eggplant with green onion. All you have to do is marinate this eggplant. Fan, I'm going to show you how to do it when I'm going to grill it. You see, I make this little fan, this little cute in the eggplant fan, eggplant, making a fan. And then marinate. This serves two purposes. You get the marinade, go through the whole thing, not only inside but outside, okay? And also, we are going to let marinate for approximately two hours. This will give the flavor inside and outside. And also, this way, when you soak it in this marinade, this eggplant won't burn. Not only it gives flavor, but it won't burn. Put some green onion here, green onion here. Turn this around. In the meantime, we are going to turn this, let me check. It looks absolutely great. Put it over here, put it over here, put it over here, put it over here. In the meantime, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put all this marinade sauce, put it right over here. And I bring this to a boil. You know why? Because I'm going to save these to make, to put it right on top of our ribs so we don't no lose anything, OK? I want to show you how quickly I make into a fan. This is eggplant. This is Asian eggplant. This is the Chinese variety. You can use the Japanese variety. Normally, it's a little bit lighter in color. And we'll cut it like this. One, two, three. Everybody see that, right? Four. And then five. Make sure very carefully. Look at this. Very, this is Yen's fan. This is nice. Kind of comes in handy in a hot summer night. And then we'll marinate this again. Oh, in the meantime, let us make sure, turn this upside down. I want, oh, this is nice and done. We'll shut this off. Look at how beautiful. Look at that, huh? Turn this upside down. This is beautiful, too. Turn this upside down. It doesn't take too long to go. Into hibachi. Very easy to do. And this is a very grilling. It's wonderful because you know why? Because it's healthy and it's simple and it's very easy to do. When it's nice and done, I'm going to show everybody. We can make this beautiful dish. First, you put the eggplant right over here. One, two, three. This is beautiful. And then you put the green onion, and you put it around here. Get some color to it. And then you're going to get the rib, which is absolutely done. OK? Shut this off, and the whole thing. Put it right over here. OK, look at this. Now look at all this. When this is done, you put the sauce, the plum sauce, right on top. Look at how beautiful. Magnificent rib. No dinner under the stars is completed without star quality fruit, like this star fruit. You cut it up, it looks like a star. Here is passion fruit. I am passionate with this passion fruit. And this is a horn melon, also called Kivano melon. It looks like this. And here we have pepino melon from New Zealand. And this is what they call the pickly pear, also called cactus, also called cactus fruit. And here everybody knows this mango. And this is California kiwi fruit. The Chinese call this wild gooseberry, monkey fruit. <laughs> and here everybody knows Hawaii, papaya. And everybody knows this is one of the, what they call the pamanello fruit. Come with red and gold. Very nice. And here, everybody know, lychee fruit. This is how it looked with the shell. This is the inside. Put in your salad, put in your fruit cocktail, put in your ice cream. 
And this is jackfruit. They also, this is from Thailand. And this is the blossom from Burma. Banana is a fruit too. And this long end, also called dragon's eye, very similar to the lychee fruit. All of these fruit, in fact, this kiwi fruit, just stop by for dessert. So we're going to come over here to make a very exciting dish called steam kiwi fruit upside down cake. All I have here is some brown sugar. I have been five eggs and also approximately one cup of brown sugar. Beat it up until they are nice and thick and stiff. No mercy. Beat the heck out of it. <laughs> now, if I were you, I would use an electric bitter because I need to exercise. Okay? Beat it up. After you beat this up, all you have to do is incorporate some, this is three quarter cup of evaporated milk with some melted butter and tiny, tiny bit of almond extract. We're going to slowly, slowly put it down. Why evaporated milk? Because we want to make this cake nice and rich and creamy. Of course, this is about two thirds of a cup. Now if you are two thirds of a cup to about three quarters of a cup, it makes it really nice. If you have a lot of time, you don't know what to do with yourself. Start it out with two cups of regular milk and let it evaporate for three months. <laughs> then you have evaporated milk. Make sure, okay? I am already totally exhausted. Mix up, and then the next step, until you got a nice smooth texture, the next step you do is put the flour. This is how you fold the flour in. Look at this. This is sifted two cup of cake flour. One tablespoon of baking powder, okay? Fold it in, fold it in, fold it in, fold it in, fold it in. More, continue to do this. Total concentration. I concentrate so much, I beat my tongue. I am absolutely speechless. Look at this. Oh, look at this. When it's done, you fold it up, fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, full, full, full. Oh, the whole thing is being full, 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 full. Hurry up. I am running out of time and patience. Ho, oh, done, 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 done. When this is all nice and done, this is how you do it. We have this nine to 10 inch cake pan. Spray with a tiny bit of oil. And then put a little piece of paper, wax paper, and then line this whole thing down. This is how you make upside down cake, okay? You put this on the bottom, okay? So. You can stand up and do it. Look at this. And put some brown sugar. Look at this, brown sugar. Brown sugar. Look at this. And after that, you are going to put the whole thing in like this. Very, very. And then steam it, OK? Steam it for about 20 minutes. Look at this. After you steam it for 20 minutes, you will have something Looks marvelous. I want to show you the one that I just have steamed. Look at this. Look at this. When this is done, you hold on to this. Put this upside down. Look at this. Very, very carefully, very carefully. Look at this. If you want, you can garnish it with this beautiful flower. Look at how beautiful. Everybody can do it. Now you can create a galaxy of wonderful dishes for your own dinner under the star. Until next time, if Yen can cook, so can you. Joy Gin.